Hello people of YouTube, it's Deepak here, and welcome to DCS World 2.9.4 and Razbam Simulations F-15E Strike Eagle module. Welcome to tutorial 6, air-to-air -air missiles with radar queuing. Today I'm going to demonstrate the use of the AMRAM, the Sparrow and the Sidewinder uh, when used with a stable radar lock, uh, or a PDT in the case of the AMRAM, that is. Uh, today I'm carrying a mixed loadout of two AIM-120C-5 AMRAMs, I have two AIM-7MH Sparrows, and I have four AIM-9M Sidewinders. Uh, so these, uh, this is a fairly kind of standard loadout here, you can see them spread out. I'm also carrying two fuel tanks, as you can see, and I'll, I'll demonstrate each one of these in their kind of normal radar-guided mode. In the case of the AMRAM, it's also possible to launch it in what's called visual mode without a lock. Uh, the Sparrow also has a flood mode, uh, and of course the AIM-9 uh, Sidewinder can be fired without a radar lock, uh, just using its own seeker. I'm not going to demonstrate any of those methods today. I'm only going to demonstrate the normal methods of employing these missiles with a radar lock or a PDT in the case of the AMRAM. So if we go ahead and jump into the cockpit, let's get ourselves set up. First we want to make sure that we are in air-to-air -air master mode. Everything is you know, easier to, to operate in that, in that case. Uh, I'm going to go down to the right hand DDI and we're going to go to main menu and we're going to choose the armament page, otherwise known as the PAX system. And uh, this has a lot of different pages that we can bring up. It has information for air-to-air, air-to-ground ordnance, training modes, and also uh, the ability to jettison or to load different ordnance on the aircraft. Um, air-to-air ordnance self-identifies, so you should never need to do an air-to-air -air load. Uh, but um, yeah, in the case of air-to-ground, you may need to do a load if you haven't done an air start. We're doing an air start on this occasion, so that's not necessary. If I go ahead and choose the air-to-air -air master mode for packs, we can now see what weapons we have on board the aircraft. Uh, now, uh, note that the uh, 120s show as V if they're C-5s. Uh, normal Cs just show as, show as C. You can also have AIM-120A uh, AIM or B as well. Um, the Sparrows are identifying as 7MH, and the Sidewinders are identifying as 9M. Um, so you can see our complete loadout here. Uh, most of the options on this page uh, are for information only. The push buttons that we do have, most of them are not implemented. Uh, we do have the ability to change the fire rate for the cannon, but we won't be looking at that today. Uh, for the AMRAMs, you have the ability to choose the expected target size, but this is currently not implemented. In the real world, this would affect the operation of the fuse. Uh, you also have the ability to select the expected radar cross-section of your target. That's also not implemented. Uh, there's a deconfliction mode where you can tell it uh, what member of a flight you are. I'm currently showing as a singleton, one of one, but you could say that you know I'm the lead of a two-ship, I'm the wingman in a two-ship, and then your numbers one, two, three, or four in a four-ship. We're going to leave that in one, one. I also don't think that that's implemented. Yeah, I don't know what mods does. Uh, up here in the top right, we have the telemetry power switch. That's also not implemented. And then we've got the ability to flip to the air-to-ground page and see our air-to-ground ordinance, or we can press air-to-air -air and come back to this page again. Uh, you can see that um, th these weapons are all showing as either ready or standby just now. Uh, so if I come back out of that again, let's... Uh, oh, yeah, master, switch, uh, master arm switch is on. We want to make sure that that is the case. And we also want to make sure that our radar is powered, which it is. Fantastic. I already have a command bars on the left-hand side for the radar, but if I didn't, I would push my castle hat to the left long, and I can then move my cursor. I've got some targets off the top of the range just now. Let's come out of active pause, and we'll start making our way towards those targets that are a bit further out. And while I'm doing that, we'll get set up and ready to employ the AMRAMs in the first instance. Currently on the HUD, you can see that I have air-to-air -air times 2 V, uh, which means that it's the AIM-120C-V. If I push my weapon switch down one, I actually get S for short-range missile, four times M, so that's uh, I've got four AIM-9Ms, down again, and I've got my gun, 510 rounds of gun. Uh, if I go all the way back up to here, uh, to my... Um, 
uh, to, to my medium range missiles. Once I've fired off the two Amrams, I'll then get the two uh, Sparrows show up. So, uh, we're going to continue inbound, and I'm then going to demonstrate a double launch of Amrams against the targets up ahead. It's actually these ones up here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and tap my TDC, and then go aft on the auto act switch. That puts me straight into a TWS mode, and we're going to start building up a picture of these aircraft up ahead. Uh, I'm going to accelerate to quite a high speed so I can catch up with them, because they've had a chance to get away from me a little bit. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and set one of them just now as my PDT. And uh, we actually have a shoot queue for some reason, even though we're definitely out of range. Uh, you can see on the right-hand side of the HUD here, I've got range 57 nautical miles. So we're going to continue inbound and uh, see if I can uh, get within range to fire this missile. I'll then also go over the DLZ, which is down the left, the right-hand side of the, the HUD just now. Uh, there we go, we're picking up another one. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to select that as well as my secondary. And I should now be able to go Castle Hat switch up. Sorry, not Castle Hat, Cooley Hat switch up. And that should allow me to flip between the different targets. Yeah, that's working in fact. So that's the way that we're going to employ the missile. We're going to fire against the first target and then go Cooley Hat up to cycle to the next one before we uh, proceed to engage. So I'm going to get in a little bit closer, and then I'll show you the detail of the DLZ and what all of that information means. Uh, also note we have the steering dot here and the ASE circle, which is currently dashed. That's the allowable steering error. For best shot, we want the steering dot inside the ASE before we fire. I'm going to bump the range down a little bit on the radar here, and you'll notice that the DLZ... Uh, comes out a little bit when I do that as well. Let's go ahead and pause, and I'm going to zoom down on the DLZ on the right-hand side of the HUD here. So you'll see that the, the range scale appears at the top. 40 nautical miles is the entire scale we have here. We have uh, marks for one quarter of that range, so 10 nautical miles in this case, uh, half, 20 nautical miles, uh, three quarters, 30, and in the top being 40. We then have a series of icons showing us different ranges. So actually right now we have this triangle, it's actually just outside of the top. Uh, that is our arrow, that is the maximum range at which the missile could reach the target in perfect circumstances if the target does not move. This is basically always a wasted shot, but you might you might do that if you want to scare your target or cause them to go defensive. The next one we have is this circle that is our optimal. Uh, so this is the optimal range. Basically, if we had the steering dot right in the middle of the ASC and we fired at this range, the missile should reach the target as long as it doesn't do anything too excessive. Uh, this filled rectangle bracket, this is called RPI, uh, and this would be maximum range with our current steering. So if we don't centre the steering dot and fired, we'd need to be at this range in order to have any chance of getting a hit. This tr filled triangle is called our manoeuvre. Um, so basically, this is the, the maximum range at which if our target manoeuvred at between 4 and 5G, uh, we should still get a hit. And at the very bottom, we have the staple. At the top of the staple uh, would be the range at which we could still hit the target if it, did, if it did a 180 and afterburned the other way. So this is like guaranteed hit within this range. And the bottom of the staple is our min, otherwise known as minimum engagement range. Um, so yeah, that's the, <laughs> that's the very closest we can be and fire the missile. So I'm going to bring us out a little bit and we're going to continue inbound and let's see if we can make a shot. Uh, I'm going to start turning left. Another thing to note is on the outside of the ASC we have this line that shows us our target's heading at the present time. So he is actually hot inbound. Uh, and we have closure rate beside the current range. The current range is this correct. We have a closure of over a thousand uh, uh, knots. So steering dot is getting closer in now. Uh, we are approaching our maneuver which is the range at which I am actually going to fire at this target. Okay, we're in that range. Pushing and holding pickle. Fox 3. Going to go Cooley Hat up. And up again. There we go. That gives us another member of this group. And I'm going to fire again. And I'm going to pause again. We're going to take a very quick look at the different counters that we have here. 
Um, so this counter here would be time to impact if we fired our currently selected missile. These two time to impacts showing here are actually time to impact for the two missiles in flight. So we're going to take just a little moment, I'm going to come out of pause and I'm going to actually go idle uh, on the throttle and give these missiles a bit of time to reach their targets. Ah, right, actually, sorry, that was time to active. They're now showing M, which means they're in medium PRF, and we now have the countdown to impact. Sorry for that. So first one should have hit. Second one should hit now. I didn't see impacts, so they may have been defeated. Okay. Oh, no, actually, no. <laughs> Cancel that. That's two splashes. Okay, I'm going to return to search now. And I'm going to pause again. So that was two Amrams, two kills. As I said before, we could do that with up to eight. You'll now see that we have medium range, two times H. And this means that we have two of the AIM-7MH missiles. Now note that these are semi-active radar guided missiles. We need a single target track. And we need to maintain that single target track the whole way to impact. Let's see if we can quickly get ourselves a new lock. I should, hopefully be able to find somebody over here now. If not, I'll simply reset and uh, we'll begin again. Yeah, I think, I think I've think i burned my opportunity there. Let's come all the way around. Now, uh, note that the DLZ for the Sparrow and for the Sidewinder are the same. I'm actually going to go up on the auto ack switch, actually, just now. Sorry, uh, return to search and then up on the auto ack. And that gives us the HUD scan. Actually, let's go down and do the vertical scan as we come around. We should pick something up if we do this. Unless they have absolutely scattered. No, nope, I've got nothing. I think we've lost them. Okay, that being the case, I'm going to reset the simulation and you'll be right back with me and I will demonstrate shooting a sparrow. Okay, I've reset the simulation and you rejoin me in basically the same setup as before. Uh, one quick thing to note, you can go boat switch forward in order to reject your currently selected missiles. So I, I had um, the AIM-120C-5s. If I go boot switch four, I go straight to the, the sparrows that I had here. So uh, let's go ahead and grab ourselves a target for the sparrow. I'm in... Uh, RWS. I'm going to go ahead and try and STT one of these targets. And apparently I'm failing. And I'm going to return to search. Let's try that again. Wow, I lost them all. <laughs> okay, let's uh, let's do an azimuth bump. Improve our chances here. Okay, I'm going to target the right hand most one. There he is. Okay, I've got him locked up. Uh, we're currently showing just within... Uh, RPI, I'll get a little bit closer. Uh, again, range is on the right-hand side. Time to impact is also just below that. In the case of the Sparrow, there is no active time, of course. You need to retain the radar lock the whole way down. Uh, this seems like a decent uh, range, so I'm going to pull and hold pickle. Okay, the missile is away, and I need to retain this lock the whole way to impact. Uh, and you'll see that we now have time to impact if we were to fire now. The one below is the missile in flight. Let's continue inbound and see what we get. Very, very simple missile to employ. Uh, okay, the system's warning us that we're starting to... Uh, we're within the uh, the kind of bracket, so that's why we start getting the flashing shoot lights, and that's a kill. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, reject that lock, return to search, and let's see if we can shoot one more. Wouldn't that be fun? We've got something showing out here. There we go, that's the remainder of that formation. Let's try and pick up a lock. I just did. Let's continue inbound against this one. And this is a good enough range for us to fire. Uh, I'm going to center the dot just to get the best possible shot. And pulling pickle now. And that sparrow is away. Okay, 
We now have flashing as we're well inside the bracket. And that's a hit. That's a splash right there. Okay, gonna return to search again. I'm now going to go aft on the weapon switch. And we now have our short range missiles. And uh, I'm actually just gonna auto -ack, um up and see if we can pick up one of these targets to our front. Because of course the, uh, the Sidewinder is pretty short range. Uh, there's no point actually going, actually I'll use the long range bore sight for this. There we go. I've got one of them in long range bore sight. Um, so you can see that uh, the, the seeker head of the missile is tracking that target perfectly happily. Uh, I could uh, press boat switch aft and actually flip between these. Uh, let me bring up... Oh dear. Let me go acquisition switch forward long again. No, I'm completely failing to actually pick these up. I'm going to return to search now and then long forwards on the auto act switch and see if I can pick one of these up. This is not working. No, this is not working for some reason. Uh, I'll return to search again. And... Yeah. I'm not picking these up. There we go. I've got them on the search. I'm going to actually just try an STT. I've got him on STT. Right, there we go. And you'll see that the Seeker, which is denoted by Circle, is following the target that the radar has. Uh, as before, we have closure rate... Oh, we just lost the lock. Interesting. It's harder than you would think to do this. I'm going to try and get some kind of a lock here. There we go, I've got it back again. So yeah, again you can see the range and the closure rate. Uh, we're, we're approaching RPI, that's probably good enough for me. I'm going to pull pickle and I've just launched the, the Sidewinder. Note that Sidewinder is completely autonomous, so we don't need to retain that radar lock. So as such, I'm going to go ahead and reject that lock and lock up the next guy. It <laughs> locked up the wrong one. Uh, but we're going to fire anyway because our seeker head was on this particular target. That's a splash on the right. And we should get a splash on the left as well. Both targets destroyed. Return to search and I'm going to go weapon switch up to get rid of that terrible sound. Uh, so there you go. That is the procedure for radar queued launches of the AMRAM, the Sparrow, and the Sidewinder. As I said at the beginning, in the case of the AMRAM, you can fire up to uh, up to eight targets using the the target step, which is Cooley Hat up. Uh, Sparrow can only be fired against a single target, and you need to retain that single target track the whole way to impact. Sidewinder. Uh, you, you can use the radar queuing, but of course the thing that actually matters is the seeker head. You need the seeker head on your intended target and good tone before you fire. It's then entirely autonomous. You can immediately engage a different target. Okay, thank you very much for watching everybody. I hope you all enjoyed that. If you haven't already, please subscribe, like, and comment. It's a really big help to me and to the channel. You also have the option of further supporting the channel by joining Deep Hacks Ground Crew. Thank you very much to those of you who've already done so. It's a small monthly fee, approximately the same as the cost of a cup of coffee, and it really helps me in creating this content. Uh, the, the names of those who are already in the ground crew are on screen now. Uh, you've got some small benefits in that we have a, a Discord server that we share together, and we also occasionally fly together from time to time. So uh, thank you all very much for watching. Fly safe, and I'll see you all next time.